I'm Daphne Richards. Our question this week came from several different viewers and is one that we in Extension consistently hear, like clockwork, at the onset of every citrus season, when the fruit of lemons, limes, oranges, and other citrus begin to ripen in backyards everywhere. When first spotted, the damage invariably causes extreme panic in unsuspecting citrus lovers, along with the fear that some terrible disease is rampant. Well, dear viewers, I am not ashamed to admit that even with my two degrees in plant science and 15 years experience as an extension agent, I still have to consult our fabulous state fruit specialist on this one. Bless Monty Nesbitt, who I know must be extremely frustrated by my continued inability to diagnose this issue without consulting him to boost my self-confidence. But you'd never suspect it by his patient, measured response over the dozens of times I've sent him photos of damaged citrus fruit. So if you don't believe me when I tell you that this damage is initiated by mischievous mockingbirds, I truly won't be offended. But honestly, these silly birds are the culprits. For completely unknown reasons, they peck at ripening citrus fruit, bringing juices and volatile compounds to the surface, which then attracts, you guessed it, fungal spores, which leads to the appearance that you see in these very graphic images sent in by viewers Valerie and Christina. As with all animal-related issues, there's really no good remedy to this situation. Some sort of physical barrier like netting is the best recommendation, but be sure to wrap it around the trunk to keep the birds from sneaking up under the canopy. And we received a couple of other citrus-related questions from viewers this week, including these leaf minor damage leaves from Jesse, and another picture from Christina of some chomped leaves and the criminal Katie did caught red-handed. But I'd like to send a heartfelt personal thank you to Christina for these photos that she sent in honor of my lovable Augie of her two rescued doxies. Bentley is admiring her Meyer lemon tree before it was damaged, and Obi-Wan is enjoying a bit of nature in a field of wildflowers. Our plant this week is Lemon Balm, Melissa officinalis, an easy care herbaceous perennial and culinary herb. Lemon balm grows much the same way as mint, creeping across garden beds by shallow underground rhizomes. It stays rel reliably short and makes a great ground cover, only getting over a foot tall if it contained and unable to creep. As with mint, a close relative of lemon balm, you'll need to stay on top of lemon balm to keep it from moving into unwanted areas of the garden. Plant in full sun to partial shade in beds that are well drained but kept relatively moist. Lemon balm also spreads by seeds, but the flowers are relatively small and unstriking. To keep it in shape, shear lemon balm regularly and all the way to the ground in late winter to force the production of new growth. Our viewer picture this week is from Linda Offshe of her crinum that finally bloomed. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit us at klru.org ctg to send us your questions and pictures from your garden. Mm -hmm.